Hello everyone, myself Sabri and I welcome you to our channel Solution Bridge Network and one-stop solution for all your power platform tutorials. Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to understand how we can create a pivot table in Power Apps. The source what I have taken here is again a SharePoint list. I do have these list of columns so sales person, product, month, month number and revenue. You obviously know whenever we create a pivot table, if you place salesperson in the rows, month in the column and respective revenue in the value, you will be able to see the revenue for the specific month with respect to a salesperson. And the Excel pivot will automatically add the column whenever a new column is added to the source and upon refresh. We would like to apply the same logic in the Power Apps as well. So let us jump back to the Power Apps window and start creating our pivot table. I already have a blank canvas where I have added just a header and connected my pivot table data what I have shown you in my SharePoint list. As a first step, what I would like to do here is to add a container. So let me go to insert, search for a container and you will get three different types of container. I would like to use a vertical container. The reason being I would like to add two different sections. One is for my header and another one is for my body. So let me click on vertical container. Let me resize it and place it accordingly. I really used a small container so that whenever column exceeds the available width, I will be able to explain you how we can add a scroll to it. So just to differentiate the container and the background of the screen, I would like to add a background color to the screen, which is of a light gray, so that you will be able to differentiate the container well. Go to the container, make sure set the color to white. Now we have our vertical container added. It's time for us to add the gallery components. So I would like to add two different types of gallery into it. The first gallery, what I would like to add is a horizontal gallery. So I would like to go with blank horizontal gallery, which will be used to create my column level headers. So let me click on blank horizontal gallery. I would like to call this as gal header. And now the second gallery, what I would like to add is a vertical gallery. So just type for vertical and go with adding a blank vertical gallery. Let me call it as gal vertical. Since this being a vertical container, you can see the horizontal gallery, what we have added comes first followed by the vertical gallery. So first let us select the horizontal gallery, go to the properties, and in the properties, I would like to say turn off the flexible height so that we will be explicitly able to give how much height that we are intending for this horizontal gallery. So I would like to give only the height of 50 for my horizontal gallery. So this will act as a header wherein the bottom vertical gallery will show all the content items. And Additionally, what I would like to do is I would like to take off the scroll from this gallery component. Since this gallery is already selected in the properties, scroll down and say disable scroll bar. Go to the vertical gallery and if you notice the vertical gallery's height is beyond the container height. Now let's go to the container. Let's check what is the height of the container. It is 321 plus what we have added. We have added a gallery which is horizontal gallery of size 50 so 321 minus 50 should be the height for this gallery so go to this go to the minimum height call it as container 2 dot height minus gal header dot height so this will automatically fit the gallery inside the container if you click on edit, you will be able to see the template width for the specific gallery item, which I would like to resize. So again, in the properties, go to padding, make the padding as zero. And in the template size, what I would like to do is, I would like to keep the template size as 50, which is similar to the top component. Now let's connect to the data source. I would like to add a button and create the data source in form of a collection so that we will be able to avoid delegations. So let me say clear collect pivot data and this pivot data is nothing but the complete table of pivot table. 
Now, whenever you click this button, you will have a temporary collection created as pivot table, which will show all the data of this SharePoint list. Now, coming to this part, let's go to the gal vertical and in the data source, we would add this. So I would like to use a distinct function data source, which is our pivot data, followed by the column. What I would like to retrieve is the salesperson and go for it. Now click on close. Now, if you expand this table, you will see the unique salesperson available in our data, which we would like to add here. Click the template, add a text label. Make sure you fit it to the size. And I would like to make sure the complete height of this is 50. And if you see the width is 173, let me make it as 200. And we can center align the name of the salesperson. If you want, you can create one more variable here, which is called the width. So let's say set where width is 200. We will be using this var width variable across the page so that whenever you want to change a width, it will not be a difficult task. Go here, tag the width as var width. Now, as a next step, what we need to do is to create our header component. Just to differentiate this label, what I would like to do, I would like to go and give a different color shading to this fill so that this section will be highlighted differently. Let's go. To the top gallery which is our gal header and if you click it again you will see the specific template item again i would like to remove the padding and this template width should be similar as that bar width so, so whenever you add one item this section and this section will align automatically now it's time for us to create the header section go to the data source property of the cal header here what we would like to do we would like to do the same thing distinct of pivot table comma now we would like to retrieve the month so we call it as month and we can close it let's go insert a text label into that item and let me place it on this x y is zero and arrange it so that you will have the month automatically created. Now you can see Jan, Feb, March and April being auto created. But you notice that the first item, whatever we create here should be blank and that should be the salesperson name. To achieve that, let's go to the data source again, make a small change here with the help of table function. So I'll say open table function and add the first element of the table function to be again a table so let's say table of the value whatever i would like to pass in the first element is salesperson and let me close this and close the table function for the first element let's say comma this is the second item of the table and the last item is just the closure just close the table functions code now, if you see automatically the first element, the header, the salesperson comes up. If you select here, you will see the table section. And if you open it, you see it's called as value column. And that's the reason we used the same value so that whenever you select the complete items property, you will see it in the same format. Just to differentiate the top level headers, I would like to give a different color to it. Now we have the header section and we have the rows added as well. Now it's time for us to configure the values. Before we go ahead and configure the values, we would like to have a scroll because you know already the data, whatever we are seeing here, gone past our view. Go back to the container make sure you enable the horizontal scroll as true next step what you would like to do is you need to make sure to set the width of the gal header to automatically adjust the number of elements available in the gallery so let's go back to the gallery copy this code whatever is in the item property of the gal header 
go to the width section of it and let's say count rows of the complete item multiplied by where width we have a spell error in the rows let's change that first it will see how many rows available here we have five rows and we know automatically the width whatever we have assigned its where width based on that it automatically extends the width of that gallery now you see that this gallery is outside this container and hence the scroll whatever we enabled at the container level becomes visible now if you run the app and just do the scroll you will see the things moving now it's time for us to come and configure the values it's very simple go to the gallery just copy the gallery whatever you have created come to the vertical gallery edit one of the component and paste the gal header whatever you have copied in there rename this gal header to gal values so that we will be able to differentiate the items whatever we have added next step what we would like to do is just adjust this gal header values to start from the salesperson name and we need to dynamically set this value as well but here we don't need this dynamic option so we will just remove and just keep the distinct of pivot table alone so copy the pivot table values again go to the width of this gallery and say count rows of distinct of pivot table star where width so this again will have an automatic value section if you run it if you scroll past the view oh you see this got cut off the reason being this is inside your vertical gallery and the vertical gallery ends here it's again the same logic go back copy the same code whatever you have it on the top gallery width go to the gal vertical and in the width of gal vertical just replace it now all the gallery will have a dynamic width based on the number of items available in the column let me run it and come back to the salesperson view just to differentiate the value colors we will give a different shade go to the color palette and select for a different shade a light orange now if you notice we have the header section which is columns we have the salesperson which is the row section and now we have the values as well it's time for us to do the calculation for this values select the individual item in the gal values section and what i would like to do is first i would like to filter pivot table data where salesperson is equal to the salesperson should be from this gallery which is gal vertical and the salesperson is available in label 2 so let's say label 2 dot text followed by the month right the month is equal to this item dot value i'm using this item because this gallery whatever i have added have the item property as month let me come back to the code and since this being a text filter is giving the error i would like to do a sum of all the data available in this filter and i would like to add the revenue column only let me close this now you automatically see the value for allies for jan is 15000 if you run it you will be able to see the other items as well now let me go back to the source and verify one of it put a filter for the salesperson allies and if you see here for jan it is 15000 and you could see the 15000 here let's come back for feb we have two entries which is 450 and 16000 which sums up to 16450 now let's try adding in one more month and see how our calculation works the filter what i have added let me edit it in the grid view go to the last section copy the charlie's value completely add it as a new section for charlie and let's make the change to the month as may followed by the month number as 5 and i would like to give a very small value to it so let's call it as 500 
let me exit the grid view so that the changes whatever we make here get saved once this changes is done you can go to the power app studio hold the alt click on refresh button so that our entire table gets refreshed you must have noticed that the scrolls width have changed so let me scroll you see a month called may and this data is available only for charlie by this we come to end of this session if you have any questions please post it in the comment section and we will be happy to help thanks for watching subscribe our channel hit the like button and press the bell icon for our new video alerts